In a recent video, I talked about what to take on your first trip to space and how to get your space station started. One of the things I touched on was what you'll need for your first science packs and the machinery to make them, and how to get your bus up and running without using a whole mess of logistics bots. During our multiplayer K2 SE run, I came up with a system that I'm very pleased with that unloads a rocket into a row of warehouses which can then provide you with individual belts of resources. So today I'm going to run through how that works and how you can set up your own version. Welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. In my first space exploration run, I initially had my rocket landing pad unload into a purple active provider warehouse with a nearby column of requester chests that then unloaded onto the bus. This worked, but it meant I was using a lot of logistics bots and losing a lot of bots to robot attrition. I don't like using bots for high throughput tasks. I feel that they're really just there to resupply the player and provide occasional items. So when I redesigned the base around individual resource rockets and space trains, I partially implemented a proper station-based bus system. This was significantly better, but there were still a few things being made or transported the old way. This time, I decided I wanted to do it properly. I wanted a main bus design that didn't use any logistics bots at all. A space bus is going to have a lot of different items on it. Currently we have more than 50, so even if a warehouse had the capacity, there's no way I could pull all the different resource types out of a single storage building. So I needed to have a row of warehouses. I started off by putting a yellow warehouse at the top directly underneath the rocket landing pad and making sure I'd built low enough that the bus would go under the ice patch. This is where everything will initially unload into, and if anything gets picked up by construction bots or taken from a player's trash slots by logistics bots, it'll end up in here. This is good. This is the miscellaneous unsorted warehouse. From here, we can put in a row of stack filter inserters to pass anything in there down into the next warehouse. This one should be a red warehouse, so the bots won't drop anything off there, but if they need anything from it, they can pick it up. This pattern of filter inserters and red warehouses will continue on down from here for as many as you need, but we won't add the additional ones just yet. So, now we've got these warehouses, we need to make sure that the right resources end up in the right warehouses. The simplest way to do this would be to set the stack filter inserters to blacklist the resources that you want to keep in that warehouse and pass everything else on, but unfortunately the stack filter inserter doesn't have enough filter slots for this to be useful. You can only blacklist a single resource, which isn't helpful. If you also have Crastorio 2 running, you do get four slots, but even this isn't sufficient for the design I want to do. So, to get round this, place a constant combinator next to your inserters and connect it to the warehouse and all the inserters. Add the five resources that you want to keep in that warehouse to the combinator as massive negative numbers. Minus one million should do and then set the inserters to set filters based on the circuit signals. The total in the warehouse will have the resources you want to keep subtracted from it, then the inserters will pass anything that still has a positive number onto the next warehouse in the chain, in this case leaving us with just the three types of circuit and two engines in the first warehouse. The next step is to build the bus itself. If you're playing with loaders, either from K2 or from a different mod, this works really well. Place a row of five loaders and filter each one to a single one of the resources, so you'll get one belt of each, and then run some belts. The space underground belts can go under five tiles, and a warehouse plus inserters is seven tiles high, so these work together perfectly. If you don't have loaders, it's, it's a little trickier. You can still use filter inserters to load your belts, but you'll be rather limited on throughput. You could go for three resources per warehouse, allowing them to have two inserters each, which would help a bit. Bear in mind that the bus is really intended for making infrastructure rather than the high throughput of science, so this could well be okay. However, you will be making a lot of space scaffolding and also a large quantity of belts, so you may wish to have even more inserters unloading low density structures and steel. Once you've got a design you're happy with, you can copy and paste it downwards. I recommend copying the warehouse, the inserters above it, and the loaders or side exerters, but make sure you don't include the warehouse above, because that means the cable to the inserters won't be connected, so they won't start passing resources through before you've reprogrammed the constant combinator. So, let's program the combinator for my next set of resources. The two electric motors, iron, steel and plastic. The order doesn't matter, of course, you can put them wherever you like. 
If you're playing with Crestorio, I recommend considering leaving room behind the warehouses for space manufacturers to turn iron, steel and copper ingots into plates, since you'll probably want to switch over to bringing them up as ingots later, but still be able to use the same bus infrastructure. You can also do this for the exotic metals, beryllium, holmium and iridium if you want, but these will always be available as ingots, so you may prefer to just cut them up into plates on site. If you do put a manufacturer making the plates on the back of the bus, make sure you request ingots from Norvis and you stop the manufacturer running when there's a few hundred plates in the warehouse, otherwise you might end up with a lot more plates and a lot less space than you expected. Alternatively, you could have it cut up all of the plates all of the time and request ingots based on the number of plates available, but that's a less efficient use of warehouse space and more complicated, so I wouldn't recommend it. Now you can repeat this again and again for all the resources you want to have on the bus. Once you're finished, I recommend adding at least one more red warehouse at the bottom, maybe even two, to store all the miscellaneous stuff that's going to come up for construction but isn't required on the bus. Things like pumps, inserters, pylons and also anything else that gets picked up by bots and dumped into the top warehouse. You'll end up with some rubbish in here, but if you tidy it up from time to time, it should be fine. And there we go, a fully functional space bus system without using any bots at all. Once you get space trains, elevators and spaceships, you can still feed resources into the top warehouse and they'll be neatly sorted by the system, so this shouldn't need to be completely replaced later as technology improves. There are a few things to consider with this system. If you're using roboports to monitor the contents of the bus system, Make sure all of your warehouses are logistics warehouses and that they're all covered by the orange part of your robo network. If any are outside it, their contents won't be counted and will get delivered a second time, and a third time, and a fourth time. <laughs> you don't need that many pumps. Make sure none of your warehouses are at risk of filling up. We had an issue where we were requesting 10,000 low density structures, which means that when the system is satisfied, those alone are taking up nearly half a warehouse. This, combined with the stone, rocket fuel, steel plates and heat shield tiles, added up to more than a full warehouse, causing the system to jam up. I have three possible solutions to this. One is to not request quite so many of those items, but they were the ones we were running out of, and so I didn't want to change that. Another possibility would be to put in fewer item types in that warehouse, but that would have meant redesigning a significant chunk of the bus, and I didn't want to do that either. In the end, we put in a second storage building, a storehouse, for the low density structures just after the output onto the bus. This building was small enough that other bus lines could go underneath it, and it gave us an overflow. Again, this must be a logistics aware building, ideally a red storehouse, or its contents won't be counted towards the supply, and you'll have the same problem again. In this example though, we just connected it with a cable. As you build your bus out, you'll find you add extra intermediate products to it that are made on the space bus. This could be fluids like cosmic water, data cards, new science packs and so on. This is absolutely fine, they can be added in as normal, but make sure you leave that row free if you add additional belts from the warehouse column. I hope you find this design useful. There is, of course, no reason why this design can't be used down on Norvis. If you have a mixed train heading out to an outpost, this system could filter the supplies out onto a bus there. I've never used it anywhere other than in space, but it's definitely flexible enough. Have you come up with a different solution to supplying your space factory without a swarm of bots? Let me know about it in the comments. There are lots more tutorial videos on the channel, so if you're new here, please check them out and let me know what you think. Maybe even subscribe so you see the next one when it comes out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.